Well, hey guys, in this video, we're gonna be talking about how an essential oil spray has been linked to cases here in the US of a pretty serious infection, Burkholderia pseudomalia. Now, typically this is pretty rare in the US. There are a lot of cases, however, in different areas of South Asia. And when we do have cases here, it's usually from people who have traveled recently. But this all started with a couple of cases, actually four, of people becoming critically ill, going to the hospital, two of which died as a result of this. But come to find out, the source of this infection turns out to be a contaminated essential oil spray that you could buy at Walmart from Better Homes and Gardens, their lavender and chamomile room spray. Now, Walmart has since recalled this product. They've also recalled other room sprays from the Better Homes and Gardens line, the lemon and mandarin, lavender, peppermint, lime and eucalyptus, and the sandalwood and vanilla. This particular infectious organism causes something called meloidosis, which is pretty serious. In the initial stages, it can present with skin infections, feeling fatigued, and then you can develop lung infections, and it actually can become chronic, and it tends to relapse. It's very, very difficult to treat. It's resistant to many antibiotics. It causes pneumonia. It can make you go into septic shock. It can then go into a more kind of subacute uh, lung infection that actually resembles tuberculosis, it's easily confused with tuberculosis, and you can develop a latent infection. It can go latent, meaning you don't really notice that you have it, for up to 25 years, and then you can relapse later on. So it's a really serious infectious organism, and it's actually considered a potential bioterror weapon. Scientists are always trying to come up with like vaccines against and things, bearing in mind that it has this potential to, to cause serious infection and harm. As I said, it's not common here in the US. It's mostly in areas of South Asia. Cases that we do have here tend to be seen in people who have recently traveled. But we had this outbreak here and four people came down with us. A four-year-old girl here in Texas actually was hospitalized with septic shock and she uh, is now actually wheelchair bound and nonverbal, so she lost the ability to speak. So then there was a case of a five-year-old boy in Georgia who developed fatigue, and he was hospitalized and then later passed away, unfortunately. The other two cases were in a 53-year-old man from Minnesota, a 53-year-old woman from Kansas who actually has passed away. She died nine days into her hospital admission. So it's a pretty serious infection, and the people who got sick with this, they had some serious consequences. So come to find out this Better Homes and Gardens room spray, it came from India, so they think perhaps it was contaminated there and then came over here because nobody who came down with this illness had any history of any recent travel. Now, if you get sick with this and you have underlying medical problems, you are more at risk for a severe outcome, which the adults who came down with this, both 53-year-old um, adults, had background medical problems. And it's interesting how it came here through a contaminated room spray. There are a variety of ways in which you can develop an infection from this bacteria through direct contact uh, from skin that maybe you have a cut or a sore or an abrasion through direct contact with like contaminated soil, through ingestion or through inhalation, which presumably that is how they came in contact with this, either by touching it or inhaling it. It's a really challenging infection to treat. Um, the organism is notoriously resistant to a lot of anti-infective medications. Now, I'm making this video because A, I wanted to bring this to your attention in case you happen to have a Better Homes and Gardens room spray. Definitely want to get rid of it. They have been recalled. And so I wanted to bring it to your attention because I just kind of assume that, you know, maybe you weren't aware of it, but also I just find it interesting and in how things like this are communicated to us or not communicated to us. And I was thinking back to last May when the sunscreen benzene scare broke out all over the media. If you don't remember, there was this independent lab, Valashore, that set about testing sunscreens for contaminants and they found that benzene was detectable in a variety of sunscreens. And this got a lot of media attention and a lot of scare around sunscreens, unfortunately. And these sunscreens were recalled. And at the time, 
I remember the media coverage of it was having people, especially on social media, saying sunscreens are contaminated with benzene, which is a carcinogen. The one thing we're told to put on our skin to protect us from getting skin cancer actually has something that will cause cancer. Yeah, the whole thing, the way it unfolded, I just felt like it was very nefarious because benzene is a carcinogen, but toxicologists reported that the levels that were detected were so, so low that it was high highly, highly unlikely to cause any kind of harm to human health. But what's even more interesting is that it wasn't just sunscreen products for which benzene was detected. Benzene was also detected in a ton of other personal care products at the time and later on, but you didn't hear any coverage. It was just the sunscreens that they hyped up and you know caused a lot of uproar about. You didn't hear about Pantene's dry shampoo getting recalled for detectable levels of benzene. You didn't hear about Aussie's dry shampoo and conditioner or herbal essence. You didn't hear about secret antiperspirants getting recalled. I mean, you didn't get that kind of coverage in the media, the way they covered the sunscreen contamination. Likewise, Old Spice was recalled. And then um, hand sanitizers, there were actually hand sanitizers for which benzene was detected and those were recalled. So we've got a lot of different personal care products for which you can find low levels of detectable benzene and toxicologists have come out and said the levels that they are detecting in these products are so trivial, so minuscule, there is no risk to human health. But manufacturers, out of an abundance of caution, not wanting to get sued, are just recalling these products. But I just think it's interesting that the media never covered the other types of personal care products. They just created this fervor, this fear around sunscreens yet again. And so how does that tie into this Burkholderia outbreak of the essential oil sprays? I think it's, personally, I think there's some kind of vendetta out there against sunscreens. Why would you choose to not cover this outbreak, which resulted in death and critical illness amongst two, two people died, four people left critically ill. I mean, one child no longer can speak and is wheelchair bound. Why would you choose to not cover that, alerting people uh, to get rid of their Walmart essential oil sprays, but then instead fear monger around sunscreens? Why would you not cover the dry shampoo or the, or the deodorants that had detectable levels of benzene? Why would you not cover the fact that toxicologists later came out and found that these, that these levels were so low as to not cause any kind of harm to human health. And I say this because I create a lot of content around sunscreen and I continue to find it very frustrating to read comments that sunscreens are contaminated with benzene. That has become a fixed belief in a lot of people's minds as a result of that sensationalized media coverage, which is not true. And people are like, well, why are these companies recalling them? They're recalling them because despite it being at a more than acceptable low, low, low level, they're recalling them because they don't wanna get sued, even though there's no evidence of any harm to any person from these. But now people who already are against sunscreen, they have another thing in their belt for which they believe is a problem with sunscreen when it's, it's really not. Those same people will continue to use dry shampoo. They will continue to use hand sanitizers and have no problem with it. Come to find out, I mean, it's actually fairly commonly found. The levels of benzene that you're exposed to simply by going out and sitting in traffic in your car are like much, much, much higher than what you would ever come in contact with from sunscreen. But that wasn't really conveyed to the public in the way initially it was conveyed to them when the Valashore people went about doing the testing and identifying this, which I just find the whole thing very nefarious. So how does that relate then to this Burkled area outbreak? I just got my mind thinking back to the benzene thing and I just find it interesting how things are communicated to the public, certain things are communicated and not. And I find that that really, really shapes people's perceptions of things. And sometimes, and in many cases, people have 
an idea about something, a belief about something, and they seek out information specifically to confirm that belief while ignoring everything else. And so this is a, this, everything that I've told you here is a landscape of showing you that people who don't, who are not interested in sunscreen, they will laser focus in on the, the benzene thing and sunscreen, ignore everything else about benzene being detectable and all of these other products, ignore the fact that the benzene has been reported to be at such a low, low amount and has never caused any harm to any human health. They will ignore the fact that benzene in these products is actually not associated at all with anything sunscreen specific. It was found in other things, so it's not a sunscreen specific issue. It has nothing to do with like avabenzone, oxybenzone, octocrylone, zinc, titanium. It's independent of the actual sunscreen component piece of, it, of things. It's some kind of low level contaminant that apparently, uh, according to toxicologists and people in the in the industry is like a commonplace thing and not harmful to human health to be present at the, those low levels. And people will also ignore the fact that contamination is something that happens in products all the time. And it doesn't necessarily mean that it is the specific type of product. You know, for example, spinach gets contaminated with E. coli, there's always a listeria outbreak. They recall the products that are contaminated, but you don't form this firm belief that cantaloupe is bad or that spinach is bad. And that if you eat these things, they're going to cause digestive illness. You realize that it was a contamination. Like recently I did a real, a TikTok reel, a little short video um, about how sunscreen does not cause cancer. And I got a lot of comments, well, it's got benzene in it. But you don't hear people saying these same things about dry shampoo, dry conditioner, anything like that. It's just, they've already been laser focused that there's some kind of problem with sunscreen. Not only do I find the mainstream media frustrating in terms of how it communicates these things, but then you layer on top of that social media and these echo chambers and it just becomes very challenging, near impossible to stop the spread of misinformation. It is like the worst game of telephone ever. Did you guys ever play telephone when you were a child where you like, whisper something into somebody's ear and they whisper it to the next person and the next person. And by the time it gets to the person at the end of the line, whatever the original statement was is so miscombobulated. That is exactly, I feel like that's what we're living in every single day. People are not going and looking critically at the facts, at the information, and they're just believing what the person next to them said who reacted to a headline that wasn't necessarily the full picture. And yeah, I mean, it really, really spreads and it becomes very challenging to break down these false fixed beliefs about things. And in the personal care realm of things, sunscreens, body care products, I mean, it's not as serious, although of course sunscreen is important to human health. This can get very serious in other avenues of health in terms of the spread of misinformation. And it's just something that I, I really think kids especially need training and education on. Now that we don't have the Dewey Decimal System anymore, and now that we don't have, uh, you know, apparently cursive is going away, they need to really start developing some kind of curriculum for uh, literacy online. And I'm sure they do, you know, have some of the beginnings of this, but how to, evaluate information that you get online, how to spot BS, and how to just pause and say, hey, I don't really have all of the information that I need. I'm not gonna react to this. To you know, restrain oneself from reacting to everything. Because not only is it bad in terms of the spread of misinformation, but it's actually very taxing on your mental health to consume all of these inflammatory headlines all of the time. And I, like I said, I just really think that the way in which these things are conveyed to us, it's always in a, in a haphazard kind of fashion and we never really get closure on things. And we've already moved on to the next headline 
And many of these false fixed beliefs remain. And I think that that is, that's really a problem. Anyways, you guys, um, hopefully this video was informative. At any rate, at least you know to not be using the Better Homes and Gardens uh, essential oil spray. And that's the other thing, essential oils, they are uh, people who have these beliefs about sunscreen, they will put essential oils on a pedestal, even if they're contaminated with a potential bioweapon. <laughs> They, the essential oils get a free pass. They really do. The clean beauty people give essential oils a free pass. It doesn't matter how many case reports of a toxic photo eruption from an essential oil, a burn, somebody ingesting them, some sort of har harmful effect. Essential oils get a free pass, but sunscreen is always gonna be always gonna be put under this weird microscope. People do not approach any other personal care product with this level of scrutiny and skepticism. This is really tragic what happened to these people and I hope their families, you know, I, I hope their families get some some monetary, serious monetary compensation from Better Homes and Gardens, Walmart, for sure. I mean, that's very, that's sad. Can you imagine like, this is a serious illness. And that's the other thing, you know, with everything that's going on in the world, this type of lung infection, illness, fatigue, I mean, it presents an awful lot like the other thing that's going on in the world. It's not something that as a physician here in the US, it's necessarily gonna be on the top of your differential, especially given the current climate with the pandemic, somebody coming into the hospital with a lung infection, pneumonia, you know, you're gonna think about other things, you know, viral infections not this rare thing. I mean, it'd be, it'd be, this is the kind of thing that as a medical student, you're expected to put on your differential diagnosis, but it's like very, you know, it's just not gonna be at the forefront. But lo and behold, it did end up being the cause of these people's critical illness and ultimately death. Meanwhile, people are still terrified of sunscreen. <laughs> Anyways, y'all, I hope this video was informative, helpful, entertaining, interesting. Um, if you liked it, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.